Hey, what's up, Will Hamilton here. And if you're a singles player and you're unhappy with your strategy and specifically your shot selection, a lot of the times you feel like you're hitting the wrong shots, then I wanna invite you to pick up a copy of the new rules of singles. Because inside tennis analytics expert Craig O'Shaughnessy shows you 20 new rules, new strategies proven through his big data analysis to have the highest winning percentage. And what that means is, when you plug these new strategies into your game, you'll immediately start hitting the right shots and you'll win more matches. So what I wanna do right now is take you inside the new rules of singles so that you can see if it's right for you. And the new rule we're gonna check out is this one right here. It's the new rule for hitting a drop shot. Now you can see in the diagram up here at the top, we've got the old rule, the old school strategy you were taught that is inferior. And in this case, it's hitting a backhand drop shot down the line. And then below we've got the new rule. This one in particular has been popularized by Carlos Alcaraz. He's having a ton of success with it. And then if I click the play button down here, the video pops up where Craig is explaining the old rule and then the new rule. And before we get to this video, let me briefly introduce Craig and explain why the analytics are so important. So take a look at this picture of a basketball court. The little red dots are the top shot locations in the NBA. And on the left, you have the top shot locations from the 2001 and 2002 season. And on the right, you have the top shot locations from just a couple years ago. And what you can see is the game of basketball has completely changed. Today, players basically only shoot layups or three-pointers. So why did the game of basketball change so much? Analytics. When the data geeks dug into the numbers, they found that layups and three-pointers were worth more than other shots. For example, let's say you make a two-point layup 60% of the time you shoot it. Two times 0.6 equals 1.2 points per shot. Now let's say you make a three-pointer 40% of the time you shoot it. Three times 0.4 also equals 1.2 points per shot. But what about a two-point jump shot from 15 feet away that you make 50% of the time? Two times 0.5 equals only one point per shot. That last shot is an inferior shot. And take a look at this picture again. You can see that jumpers from 10 to 15 feet, called mid-range jumpers, have evaporated from the game of basketball in the last two decades. So if you know that mid-range jumpers from 10 to 15 feet are bad shots, well then a strategy to get the players in position to take those shots, that's also a bad strategy. But on the flip side, if we know that layups are good shots and three-pointers are good shots, well then a strategy that gets the team in position to take those shots, that is a good strategy. So these analytics, this math, is why the game of basketball has completely changed. And when Craig looked at basketball, and frankly looked at pretty much every other sport, take baseball for example, with sabermetrics and uh, Moneyball, you might be familiar with that, or at least the movie with Brad Pitt, Craig was saying the same has gotta be true for tennis. There are gotta be some shots that are mathematically superior to other shots. And when Craig dug into the numbers, the results were eye-opening. Craig realized from the pro level down to the college level, down to the rec level, down to the juniors, players were just taking a ton of bad shots. And just like basketball, if there are places on the court that lead to bad shots, well, we don't wanna be using strategies that set up those bad shots, but if there are places on the court that lead to good shots, well, obviously we wanna be using strategies that put us in position to hit those good shots. And when word got out of Craig's work, he was immediately hired by Novak Djokovic at the beginning of the 2017 season. And then for the next two years, Djokovic won four out of the eight majors he played in. So the results speak for themselves. The analytics give you a huge advantage over the competition. Whether you're Novak Djokovic playing Rafael Nadal or Roger Federer, or whether it's you at your level, the USTA league and club level. So chances are, right now, you are using a lot of old rules, old school strategies that are setting up bad shots, the equivalent of that mid-range jumper. And inside the new rules of singles, there are 20 of them. So right now, let's check out the old rule for the drop shot and what you should do instead, that new rule. So let's watch the video right now. Craig, let's talk about the drop shot, the old way, the old rule, and what's the new rule? 
Drop shots are a fun thing to do. They're a secondary pattern. And in general, from studying the wind percentages for a couple of decades, it's generally around a 50-50 bet. Yes, we do well with them sometimes, but um, you know we put them in the net, we miss them wide, players run them down. So if you can, in general, the old way, win 50%, that's about as good as you can get. The new way, and it's done slightly different, and it's from our world number one, Carlos Alcaraz, he is winning 70% of his drop shots. I'm gonna show you exactly how he does it. Let's start with the old way first. Normally, it would be a backhand drop shot that is hit from this part of the court, and it's hit down the line. So it goes right there. And what happens on that backhand is when we get into our ready position, we can hide the grip change behind our body. We can hide the angle of the racket. So that was pretty good. We put some in the net. Again, opponents would run some of them down. What Alcaraz does is something very different. He is thumping a forehand deep in the court, a big forehand, a hard forehand, and he is pushing the opponent back. Now, with the opponent on defense, they have basically one place to go, which is to hit the ball back cross court. What Alcaraz does is he lines up in exactly the same way, like he's gonna hit it again, the opponent is back, the opponent's on the heels, and he changes it up and hits a forehand drop shot. And it's a different target as well. That forehand drop shot is hit from the ad court, but it's hit as a forehand cross. So the grip, sometimes it's changed a little bit, sometimes it's not at all. But it's really the assist shot that pushes the opponent back that wins the point. So in Miami this year, Carlos hit 50 drop shots in the tournament. He won 70%, 30 of them came off the forehand wing, 20 came off the backhand wing. A completely different way to go about winning points with drop shots. So a couple of things there you mentioned, sometimes on the forehand somebody changes the grip which would be to the Continental, but sometimes they just keep their forehand grip and they just use it and still hit the, uh, the drop shot. I'm assuming easier with a more conservative grip like an Eastern versus a more extreme grip that might be tougher to hit that drop shot. I think these guys have just got good at practicing it. You know, I personally love to hit drop shots. I like these secondary patterns. I love to bring my opponent up to the net and, and, and run them but I'm always looking to change my grip and hit a true continental so the open face doesn't really change. It's just easier for me. But when we see Carlos do this, especially off the forehand side, they're coming through with a little bit of a scooping motion and opening up that face. And I think the benefit of that is they don't really have to change the grip and it's just practice. They've just got good at that and they get good backspin on it and they get to float it over here. And if the opponent's already leading back, it's very difficult to run down. Sure, so that obviously helps a ton with disguise because you're showing I'm about to hammer this thing and then you just do that and you get the drop shot. The second uh, just sort of practical question for a club player, where would you recommend uh, they be standing when they hit this drop shot? We've obviously got this player behind the baseline, probably maybe a little bit forward. I would think when they're, you know, for a club player, it might be a little bit easier to, to get that drop shot. Is that a good way to go about it? Absolutely. Um, you, as a good general rule, if you put one foot on the baseline, that kind of activates the drop shot. We can go for drop shots once we're there. Certainly two feet inside the baseline, being close to the net is always better. If you have two feet behind the baseline, much tougher, much tougher. And the opportunity for the opponent to run it down is a lot higher. So I would definitely say hitting your drop shots either on the baseline or inside the baseline is always going to be better. So that's the new rule for the drop shot. And there are 20 new rules inside the new rules of singles. Now you might be wondering about the logo because it kind of looks like a pie chart you might see in your stock portfolio and what's with the little green slice and why is the tagline small margins win matches? Well, I wanna share what might be the most important stat to be aware of when it comes to winning more matches. So imagine an opponent right now you are dead even with. This is somebody you play right now, just imagine that person in your head, and it is a 50-50 match. Whenever you play, it kind of goes back and forth, like you win some, you lose some. So what percentage lift do you think you would need for you to not only beat that person comfortably, but be the best player in your league or at your club at your level? 
because when Craig dug into the numbers, he found that the number one player in the world, whether it's Roger Federer or Serena Williams, Rafael Nadal, Novak Djokovic, they were all winning exactly 55% of the points they were playing throughout the course of the year. It's like the magic number in tennis. And what that means is whether it's the pros, college, USTA, or juniors, you just have to win 55% of the points you're playing to not only beat that person you're currently dead even with, but actually become the best player at your level. You go from 50% to 55%, you win that five extra percent, that's what the little green slice is, and you are the best player at your level. And that's what these 20 new rules will do. We're gonna cut out the old rules, we're gonna replace them with the new rules and get you that tiny 5% lift because small margins win matches. Now, if you followed Fuzzy Yellow Balls for a while, you know that when we work with top talent like Craig or Martina Navratilova or the Bryan Brothers, our programs typically run 397 bucks. But what I wanna do for a limited time here on this page is let you get your hands on the new rules of singles for just one payment of 67 bucks. All you gotta do is scroll down this page to check out and you will have instant access to all 20 of the new rules of singles. Now, when you pick up a copy, I'm also including three awesome bonuses. These are additional trainings you get for free. And the first is called Crush Pushers with Analytics. Now, the pusher is like the most annoying type of opponent to play because they run everything down, they just moonball it back deep. Uh, it's really, really difficult to play offense. And what typically happens is you go for a lot early in the match but then errors start to creep in, so you back off your shots, and by the end of the match, you're actually moonballing, you're actually pushing with the pusher, which is, of course, exactly uh, where they want you, right? And then you end up losing a relatively close match, and you're super frustrated on the drive home, and you say, ah, I gotta quit tennis, I hate this sport. Clearly, you can see I've been there. But what if we could use big data to figure out how to beat pushers once and for all? Well, we can because Craig has dug into the numbers and Craig has four phases of the game, serving, returning, rallying, and approaching. And for each one of these, he shows you the strategies that are backed by data, the ones that are gonna allow you to beat the pusher once and for all. Now you can see there's a little red box around serving here because if I hit the play button, then the serving video pops up but if I close out of this and then swipe over, the box is now, the red box is now returning. If I click play, you're gonna get the returning video. And then if I close out of that, then, and keep swiping, you get rallying. Then if I keep swiping, you get approaching. So that's how this bonus works. There's the four phases of the game. Craig's gonna show you the analytic back strategies for beating a pusher in each one of these phases. This bonus sold separately would be 97 bucks, but I'm giving it to you for free when you pick up a copy of the new rules of singles. So the next bonus is big point strategy. Now, most players, when they play a big point, they rely on their gut. But Craig, he relies on the data. And we've got four big points that we're gonna focus on. The first one is how do you save break points? And you can see there's the red box around it. It works the exact same way. Then we're gonna show you how to convert break points. This is how you break your opponent's serve. Then we're gonna show you tie breakers. And this one in particular uh, is really interesting because Craig was a part of one of the most consequential tie breakers, actually a series of tie breakers in tennis history because Craig was coaching Novak Djokovic in the 2018 Wimbledon final against Roger Federer. And if you remember that match, it was a five set match and Djokovic had to win three tiebreakers to win the championship. And frankly, Djokovic got outplayed the entire match except for the tiebreakers because before the match, Craig and Novak sat down and they were like, okay, we're probably gonna have to play some tiebreakers. So Craig gave Novak a lockdown tiebreaker strategy. All of it was based on the data, and obviously that was the difference in the match. So if you're a Fed fan, you're not gonna like this particular video, uh, and look, I feel your pain, I'm a Fed fan, and I was part of this video, it was very uncomfortable, but the strategy that uh, 
that comes out of it, you absolutely want to employ this in your game. And then finally, we've got this last icon here. It says game, set, match. This is how do you close out a lead because a lot of the times you might get up a break in the third set. I certainly know I've been up a break in the third set and then uh, that break evaporates and I end up losing. So this is all about how do you actually close out that lead. This bonus sold separately would be 97 bucks, but I'm giving it to you for free when you pick up a copy of the new rules of singles. So if big data can help us crush pushers and big data can help us with our big point strategy, can big data help us practice? Well, yes, it can because that is our third bonus. It's called the practice court is broken. And this is Craig saying, because certainly at the USTA league and club level, when folks practice, they are doing drills that reinforce the old rules that set up inferior shots. Like when you practice breaking down someone's backhand in a long rally, that is inferior. So Craig is gonna fix your practice court with a series of drills. The first is serve plus one. The second is serve plus one approach. The third, serve and volley. The fourth is one called uh, the two racket length drill. This is for working on your second serve. Then we've got a serve and return only drill. This one's kind of weird, but it's, uh, it's super effective. We've got a backhand return approach drill over here. And then we've got one called the perfect point. And when you replace your old practice plan with this practice plan, when you stop practicing the old rules and you start practicing the new rules, you're gonna go from winning 50% of the points you play to 55% of the points you play, and you're gonna become the best player at your league or in your club. Normally, this practice plan is 97 bucks when you buy it separately, but you get it for free as a bonus when you pick up a copy of the new rules of singles here on this page. So all you gotta do to get this whole package is scroll down this page and click checkout. And remember, you are getting the new rules of singles, which is a $397 value. And you are getting crush pushers with analytics, a $97 value. You're getting big point strategy, a $97 value. And you're getting the practice court is broken, also a $97 value. When you add all that up, it comes out to a value of 688 bucks, but you can get all of this analytically backed training for just one payment of $67 here on this page. Oh, and if you're wondering, you are protected by my 365 day, no questions asked money back guarantee, which means you can take all 20 of the new rules of singles for a whirl for the next year. You can take all the bonuses for a whirl. And at the end of 365 days, if you're like, well, you know, just just wasn't really my thing, no worries. I will give you every single penny back. I'll give you a complete refund. So that's the deal. And look, if you believe in the power of analytics in sports, I think you're gonna be thrilled by the impact these new rules have on your game. This is uh, uh, brand spanking new. Um, it's one of the coolest products we have ever created. And you can get it all for just one payment of 67 bucks. And again, it's completely risk-free for the next year. So just scroll down this page uh, and click checkout and you will have access to absolutely everything just a few short minutes from right now.